You ready to work, Buggy? Okay. Bug, Lemon. Lemon's gonna show up to train because she can. We're gonna work on relax on the mat. Step one. Um, got Bug on a leash, because we're gonna want this for class. We've got our mat. We're putting it out at the start of the training session. <laughs> and we are going to move on it over. She knows this one so well that Matt comes out and she's like, I'm gonna lay on it. Um, you're gonna keep your training easy. This is, I, I don't necessarily use a ton of reward markers because I really just want more fun. Relaxing on the mat. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Um, just gonna over here. Good girl. Okay, so bug is in focus. Lemon's cute distraction. When you guys pull out the mat, I want you to have your puppies on a leash. You can have a bowl of their food or your treats ready, and you're gonna reward them for getting on the mat, all four feet. Um, you can walk them on the mat. You do not have to wait for them to magically show up for this step. So if we are gonna start over again, I might be over here. She followed me because she was on the leash. And then I just walk over there and her four feet are on the mat and I'm just gonna be like, oh, you get treats. And notice in this instance, I gave her treats kind of down low, so she just laid down. It was super easy. Um, your initial criteria is only that your puppy is getting treats on the mat, period, full stop, okay? There's nothing else to it. So I'm gonna walk her off again. Um, this time I'm gonna say, take a break. Because I do think that's an important word for right now. That's the most important word that you use in the in step one. Then I'm gonna walk her back over there. And when she gets on the mat, if just her four feet show up there, she gets a treat. And then what you're looking for your puppy to do is offer a sit or offer a down, and you're gonna reward them for going into that position. Okay? If you can lure them into the down, that's amazing. That's fantastic. Um, you don't need to tell them what to do. We really want this to be a very optional thing in order to get sort of more of that relaxed behavior that we're looking for. So yes, I just cued Lemon to lay down. I did not cue Bug to lay down. It said, yeah, maybe I want to, like that was the lure and she laid down, okay? So when you guys are working on this at home, this is a foundation block of your reactive dog course. So I want you to start kind of thinking about very calmly and intentionally being like, I'm gonna need you to remain on the mat when I do some things. But instead of going to Disneyland and seeing all the bright shiny things that you see, sights and smells and sounds of dogs and peoples, I'm gonna introduce a tiny little shiny thing, a little keep going signal, we call it. And it's this little finger wiggling. And if she stays there, she gets a treat. I any point in time, once your dog is laying down, if they sit or stand up, you're gonna say, take a break, walk around your room, and then you're gonna come back and reward them for putting their feet on the mat. See if they offer that sitter down and reward them for being on the mat. If they can remain in position, when they see that little shiny thing, you're gonna create a bigger shiny thing. And you can wiggle all your fingers at that. This is insanely nerdy. It feels ridiculous. But you're gonna use this keep going signal for a ton of basic things. And you're splitting your criteria of your dog being able to relax and calm themselves down into a tiny little reasonable step. It shouldn't take you too long to be able to do this, okay? So you're gonna do one more step while your puppy is here this week and you're gonna wiggle all your fingers and wave your hand and reward your dog for remaining in position while they're still here. That's amazing. I'm not gonna get into using really exciting reward markers, like I'm not gonna throw in a whole lot of yes and treat them because I actually wanna calm them down. So I'm just gonna very calmly hand them a treat. If you have a second dog, your second dog does not need to be working here, but she loves it, she's good at it, she shows up, so you know what? I'm gonna reward her for being calm with this. Um, just for funsies, uh, would have, oops, accidentally Bud was distracted, she got up. Take a break. I'm gonna go walk around my living room and into my kitchen with her and she's on a leash. It is not a bad thing that she gets up. We're just gonna keep it very calm, very mellow, not dramatic. That's important. She comes back to the bed. Oh, that's very nice. I know, hi, Debbie, you're so helpful. And she offered the sit, she got a treat. 
she flopped down, we're going to reward her some more. And we're going to go back to introducing the idea that no matter what happens in the environment, we love it when you stay in a down, relaxed position. I skipped ahead really quick there. Probably should have spent a little bit more time on a little shiny thing. Not necessarily heading down the road to Disney. And really at some point in time, I want you to be this mellow when you're outside on the front steps watching dogs and cats walk by. So take your time. Um, a lot of times in reactive dog classes, we notice that our dogs have a really hard time self-regulating and calming themselves down. This is a step that a lot of people want to skip because you think that when you're outside, you're moving and you're walking and you don't need this. But with this idea that we're teaching, that I really like them to remain calm no matter what's going on, you're doing it with some nice physical cues, the mat on the ground, the leash is on, and then we're also teaching them that if they can't stay in position right now, take a break. We're just gonna get up, gonna do a loop through the living room and the kitchen, and nothing exciting happens. Nothing major that's gonna amp up their adrenaline and their cortisol. And we're just gonna calmly come back. Oh my gosh, both my girls showed up. I didn't ask them to do anything. Um, you could wait and see if they lay down, or you could do a little lure into the down. That's absolutely fine. I'm not asking for it right now. This is not a huge operant behavior. I actually need the dogs to calm down and relax. So while they're remaining here one more time, we're gonna introduce our keep going signal. So this is our third, maybe fourth environmental cue. We have the mat, the leash, the bowl of treats, and now this little signal says, I really like that you're gonna stay here. I really like that no matter what I'm doing, you're just maintaining this nice, calm position. Most of your dogs are not going to be this calm. They're gonna be like, hey, treat. Or they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, what are we doing? I don't know what's going on. This is going to take practice and repetition. This is not a one and done. When you have a reactive dog, those adrenaline and cortisols get very messy and they have a harder time associating calming, they don't have a, they have a hard time calming themselves down. So that is your goal. Really dive deep, work on the relax on the mat. Your mat could be a tiny bit of a yoga mat. It could be a bath mat. That's generally a favorite in our house. In the summer, they don't lay on the bath mat voluntarily. They only do it in training sessions. Um, they like a cooler surface. So it could be a yoga mat. It could be a dog bed. I want you to make it something portable. So if you are using a dog bed, something small and portable, I like using towels, bath mats, yoga mats. My three, three favorite because I can take them anywhere with me. They're light and I can start transitioning this kind of, hey, I love that you're just hanging out here no matter what's going on idea to them. When you're all done, you just say, take a break, take the leash off. You can pick up the mats and just walk off and let them be done. Good job.